Now then, on January the 18th, 1896, the world's first ever speeding ticket was handed out to a driver. It was actually given to a guy by the name of Walter Arnold, and he was stopped for doing four times over the speed limit. Now at the time, the speed limit was a blistering two miles an hour, and he was actually stopped because he was doing eight miles an hour. But more embarrassing than that, he was actually caught by a police officer on a push bike. Imagine that. Not only has he been stopped for doing a massive eight miles an hour, but he's been chased and caught by a police officer on a cycle. Not a motorcycle, a cycle. Can you imagine? Eight miles an hour. The next time you're out in your car, put your foot down, do eight miles an hour, and see how embarrassingly slow it actually feels. And back then, that was classed as death-defying. Wow. Anyway, he was taken to court and he was charged with, apart from the speeding offence, he was charged with operating a locomotive with less than three people and he was also charged with not having a gentleman or a guy in front of the car carrying a red flag. Anyway, I don't think speeding is going to be a problem for the car I'm actually sitting in today. Now, you've already seen it in the thumbnail, so you know it's not the normal stuff that I have on my channel. It's not mine, I haven't bought it. It's still going to be British classics and American muscle cars pickup trucks, stuff like that. However, it actually belongs to a couple of friends of mine. Now, they've been given it so they can make use of it. It has been standing around for about 18 months, two years, something like that. It's not a barn find and it's not a garage find and it hasn't been dragged out of a hedge or a forest somewhere like that. And as you can probably hear in the background, it does run, it starts quite well. I think the battery is completely goosed. So I've currently, I jump started it, I've currently got it running, trying to put some life into the battery. Basically why I've got it is just have a look around it, make sure everything works on it and take it for an MOT and see if it passes. Now this isn't going to be one of those, will it start and can I drive it however many miles home because it's already running and it's already at my home. So don't need to worry about that. I've checked a few things on it. The lights work, the indicators work, hazard lights work. Um, it goes into gear, it moves up and down, it moves backwards and forwards, perfectly okay. Uh, all the windows work, the sunroof works, everything seems to work on it. The only problem that seems to be with it is the brakes are a bit, well, they do stop it. They just don't stop it very quickly. And the pedal has an awful lot of travel in it before the brakes actually do anything. The brake master reservoir was a bit low on fluid, so I've topped that up. But because it was low on fluid, there's a possibility there might just be some air in the system. So it might be something as simple as bleeding the brakes, or there may well be a hole in a brake pipe that I haven't found yet, and it might need a new brake pipe. But I think the first thing to do is to make sure that it will start off on its own, off a key, without jump starting it. And then we can organise taking it for a run around the block, make sure everything seems to be okay on it, and then we can book it in for an MOT. Here it is then. Now, in case you're wondering, it's actually a Hyundai Matrix. And of course it's red. I wonder if you can drive it anywhere, if it gives you info details on the oppressive parasitic nature of the Matrix. Or should it be in a blue one instead? Anyway, before Neo turns up, let's have a go and have a look at the back of it, see what it looks like from the back. And this is what the back of it looks like. Strange little thing. Can't imagine being comfortable in that. Anyway, as the wizard would say, let's have a look inside. Now, of course, being Japanese, it's got one of those annoying beeps when you open the door. It's enough of that. Must be a wire somewhere attached that you can snip or a fuse you can pull out. Anyway, so, in the style of Mrs. Wizard, then, apart from the deepness of my voice, we'll start by having a look at the dashboard, which isn't there, because in this car, it's over there. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera or not, but it's actually got 71,913 miles on it. The clock's wrong, so it's now saying it's 10 to 2. It's not 10 to 2. And in the middle of the bash there, nice and prominent, you've got your uh, your speedometer. And then next to that, you've got your rev counter. And on the far left there, which you can probably just make out, you've got your temperature gauge. And on the far right, there's uh, a fuel gauge as well. Now, it looks as though, judging from the design of the dashboard, it looks as though this car is one of those that has the ability to be either right or left-hand drive. As you saw, the bean counters and the manufacturers can save a little bit of money and just swap the wheel and the glove box, etc., from side to side, depending on which country they're selling it in. As you can see, we've got a nice plastic grey dashboard. No cracks, no splits, no sun damage. 
Although, in fairness, you wouldn't expect that in the UK. It never actually gets hot enough to do any, any damage to anything. And then up above, though, we've got the controls from the sunroof. And uh, we've got uh, courtesy lights. That one of them seems to work, one doesn't. But that doesn't really matter. There is a sunroof, it's an electric sunroof. Now, the sunroof does work. I'm not going to demonstrate it again, though, because I tried it once and it worked. I'm not going to do it again, just in case. And then moving around the seats are, um, are a leather. No damage to the seats, no damage to the bolsters. Uh, there's a little a few marks on the back seat, but there's no actual damage to any of the seats. It comes with three headsets. Headsets? Where did that come from? It comes with three headrests. And obviously, the scourge of everyone these days, it's got three seatbelts in the back. There doesn't seem to be a lot of space in the boot, but uh, we'll see if we can get that open shortly and give you a look in there to see how much space there is in the boot. But as I can see, there's no holes in the headlining, a couple of scuffs but nothing to uh, overly concern yourself about. And then below the gauges, in the centre of the dashboard, you've got your, uh, your vents for your heating and your cooling. There's an aftermarket radio by the looks of it, and then there's the controls for your HVAC, and it, it has got AC. And the AC does work as well. It's nice, it blows nice and cold in this car. And then obviously below that, there is a cigarette lighter. Now, we know that this is a cigarette lighter because it actually has on it the mark of a cigarette that is lit. If it was a 12 volt power socket, it would have that written on it down there. I don't know if you can make that out or not, but that says on it, power outlet. So that is a 12 volt power outlet. This, however, is a cigarette lighter. Now, a lot of people in YouTube videos do make that mistake. To my way of thinking, if it's got a cigarette engraved on it, it's a cigarette lighter. If it's got power outlet written on it, it's a 12 volt power outlet. Can we just get things subscribed as they actually are, people, and call them what they are? Now on this one, next to the cigarette lighter, the ashtray appears to be missing. This is just like a, a cubby hole there. And if we have a quick look, yeah, look at that. It's obviously never been used. I would hazard a guess by the smell of this car that it's never been smoked in. That cigarette lighter would seem to back that up. And then further down here, we've got a little cubby hole. Nothing in it. No armrest, so I feel a bit lopsided when I'm leaning over and of course as this one uh, with this particular car it's got an automatic transmission strange for such a small car I'm not sure what size it is it is a matrix cdx so I'm guessing that might well be top of the range or something like that now there is a range of warning lights that you do get directly in front of the driver and as you can see the brake warning light is come on so there's something going on with the brakes that wasn't on before it did come on when I put the handbrake on, or the parking brake, depending where you're watching this. It's got the P lit up in green because at the moment we're in park. But there's the warning lights you get. You've got your indicator, say the side of the uh, the gear indicator. Your brake warning light, which as you can see is on. Then there's your battery warning light, your fuel light, your high beam indicator. A uh, light to tell you that the boot's open. The light and the buzzer to tell you that there's a door open. And also your oil light. Right, so I've just checked the details and it's a 2004 1.8 petrol or 1800 petrol car. Uh, it's actually been off the road since June of 2021. Oh, it's got some roof bars there as well, I've just noticed those. Alright then, let's go and uh, have a look in the back, see what it looks like inside. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you in the back of the car because the tailgate doesn't seem to be uh, willing to open. So it's unlocked, it's not willing to open. However, what I have managed to find out, or have managed to find, is what the issue of the brakes is. Now, as you can see, we've got a puddle of brake fluid there, and it's dripping. So underneath this arch liner somewhere, there is a rusted out brake pipe. Right, well, I've got the battery off. The battery's in the house, busy charging. So we'll see if we can save the battery, see if I'm going to try and buy another battery. But for now, we'll leave that one there. Obviously, I'll get the battery charged up, make sure the battery's going to do the job that it's meant to do without having to try and replace the battery, see if we have a close-up of that brake pipe, and then, from what I can see, uh, we'll get it booked in for an MOT, if that's what the new owners want to do, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't worry, it's not going to be a regular occurrence on the uh, on the channel where something like that turns up. It will be a really interesting, exciting, powerful cars. But for now, though, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more of the wild and varied content that's on here. Catch you next time. Bye for now.